Hi students, we're going to talk about the measuring volume by water displacement lab. And I've picked two interesting objects here to work with. This is Bastet. And this is a piece of rock that I think is made out of basalt that I got from the Olympic Peninsula on the Pacific Beach. And I picked these because this felt, when I picked it up, very dense. And I want to pick objects that have a wide range of densities. So this felt real dense, and this felt not super dense, so I went with that. I'm going to use this, a steel socket wrench. It has a little bit of plastic, but hopefully that won't affect it too much, the density. I also chose these objects because I've wanted to identify the material. Like I said, I've always suspected this was made of basalt. Density is a great way to identify a material because it's a property of that material. Uh, same thing over here, because it feels so dense, I suspected it's made out of lead, which is really about the only common material around the house that is this dense. So I'm gonna start off massing the cat while it's still dry. I'll turn it on, let it go through its cycle. I always like to tear it just to be on the safe side. And you see the, the lock, and I'm gonna go ahead and take its mass. And it looks like 42.4. So next we need to find the volume of the cat, which we're going to do by water displacement. So normally I would want to use a small graduated cylinder to get the volume here, because it's a small object, but uh, fortunately it won't fit in. So I'm gonna go with the next best, because I can just get it in here, which is my 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. doesn't matter how much I put in as long as the cat can be submerged. And uh, I'll need my magnifier to see it. So I'm going to make sure all the bubbles are out and make sure I'm reading the bottom of the meniscus. And it looks to me like 58.2 milliliters. Uh, now I'm going to write the initial volume that I just read, which is 58.2 milliliters. So now I got to put her in there really carefully so I don't spill any water. Um, best way is to tilt it and kinda let it slide in real gradually like that. And now I'm going to read the final water level, which appears to be about 62.1 milliliters. So the final volume of the water with the object in it was 62.1 milliliters. So ultimately what happened here is that the water level started at one level and it went up to a higher level. And it's that difference that represents the volume of the object. So to find out how much the water level went up, I'm going to subtract. So I'll go 62.1 minus 58.2. I'll not trust myself and do it on the calculator. I get 3.9 milliliters. Okay. Now that of course represents the change of volume of the water. Uh, in other words, the amount of water that was displaced by the cat. However, we're interested in knowing the volume of the cat and being a solid, we'd like to convert that volume measurement of milliliters into a solid measurement of cubic centimeters. Thankfully, be, by the special relationship, it's a one-to-one -one uh, so we have simply 3.9 cubic centimeters for the volume of the cat. And now I'll transfer this onto our real data sheet. I've written in what the object was. I put the question mark for lead because I'm not really sure that's what it is, uh, the cat. Uh, you can see that I wrote down the initial volume of water uh, right here, and it's 58.2 milliliters. The final volume after the object's been put in, and that's 62.1. I made the subtraction to 3.9, and uh, you can see with the change in volume, 3.9 mils, and then the change over in units to cubic centimeters to represent the fact that we're actually talking about a solid object. I also transferred the mass. Uh, a little earlier, I got on Wikipedia and found the accepted density of lead to be 11.34 
grams per cubic centimeter. So my next step is to calculate what my measurements tell me is the density of lead. So in other words, a measured density. So here we go. I know that I can calculate density by comparing or dividing the mass and the volume of a given object. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're talking about the mass of 42.4 grams. And we're going to divide that by the volume of the object, which is 3.9 cubic centimeters. And a little calculation here. And I get a value of 10 point, and I'm going to round this off from 87 to 10.9 grams per cubic centimeter. Okay. Finally, we'd like to see how well we did. So our next job is to calculate the percent difference. So you'll recall that I'm going to take the in this case, our measured value. And we'll subtract from that the uh, what we call the accepted value. I'll call that AC, or AV rather. And dividing that by the accepted value, all multiplied by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So what we have here is 10.9 minus 11.34 all divided by 11.34 times 100. And let's calculate that. Don't forget that the top has to be in parentheses. And I get negative 3.9. And, percent. and uh, of course, the negative means that my measured value was below the accepted value. So I take that as evidence that the cat really is made out of lead because anything under 5% for this lab is excellent. I also wrote that I used the graduated cylinder water displacement method to measure the volume of the lead cat. My intention then is for you to use that method three times. Then I measured the volume of the basalt with uh, the overflow can method. My intention is for you to do three of that type of method as well. Now, using a graduated cylinder is definitely a good way to measure the volume of a liquid. Uh, however, unfortunately, I can't do anything like that with this object, so I'm going to need to use a different method. In class, we would use one of these overflow cans where we would drop the object in and water would flow out. Uh, but of course we would catch that water and the volume of the water that flows out is going to be equal to the volume of the object. But we don't have that available, so this time we'll use the next best thing, which is over here, our beakers. This process is going to be a little more complicated. Uh, it starts off with filling my larger beaker with water. And the trick here is that somehow you've got to get it so that the beaker is tilted. Right? You can I use the edge of the sink, but you could probably prop it up with some small object here. Then, to make sure I'm all the way to the top, I'm going to carefully pour water until it starts to drip out. And I'm going to turn this to make sure it's just right. Okay. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now dump that. And now here comes the really tricky part. Got to make sure I catch all the water that overflows.
think I made it without spilling any water. Amazing. So now we need to find the volume of this water that overflowed because that's going to be the same volume as the volume of the rock. However, we know that the beakers are not very accurate, so we'll need to pour this water into the graduated cylinder. I can see it's a little under 100 milliliters, so this would be the best one to use. I'm going to try to carefully pour it in. We definitely don't want to lose anything. And we want to get it all. But hopefully a few drips won't matter. And then, as before, it looks like it's right on the 87 line. So, of course, I have to call that 87.0. So I immediately record 87.0 milliliters for the volume of the overflow water. But, like I said, we know that's the volume of the object as well. So in cubic centimeters, it's 87.0. I've gone ahead and transferred the data. First, the actual amount of water that flowed out, which was 87.0 milliliters. Uh, and then simply change that to 87.0 cubic centimeters. Uh, transferred the mass of 229.5 grams. And now I'll make the calculation. So uh, the mass of 229.5 grams divided by the volume of the object, which is 87.0 cubic centimeters. Calculate that. Then I get a value of density of 2.64 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, I looked up in Wikipedia the density of basalt, and what I found was an average value because basalt can vary in composition. Uh, so really, the fact that mine is a different number from that doesn't really tell me a whole lot, except that it's pretty close, but let's do a percent difference anyways. So, as before, we'll take the measured value which we have as 2.64, subtract from it that accepted value of 2.90, divided by 2.90 times 100. And then we'll do the calculation. Again, remember the top has to go in parentheses. negative 8.97%. Um, and uh, that's under 10%. That's still pretty good for us. Anyway, I hope you enjoy doing the lab and good luck. And in the tradition of Schrodinger's cat, we'll thank Bastet for giving her life in the service of science. Being the Egyptian cat goddess, she's probably divine anyway.